the novel agents that we have uh, over the last 10 to 15 years in multiple myeloma first prove their merit uh, in relapsed and relapsed refractory uh, disease management. And of these agents, bortezomib, the first generation proteasome inhibitor, and lenalidomide, uh, the very um, early uh, immunomodulatory drug, are approved as uh, regimens for relapsed myeloma therapy across the world. Um, there is, in addition, a combination of bortezomib and pegylated doxorubicin, which is also approved for relapsed myeloma. Most recently, we've had the second generation of agents approved for treatment of relapsed disease. They include pomalidomide and dexamethasone, the new uh, immunomodulatory drug, on the one hand, and carfilzomib, uh, the new proteasome inhibitor, on the other, that are approved for relapsed myeloma treatment. And just earlier this year, there was the first in class uh, histone deacetylase inhibitor. Panabinostat was approved. That was approved based on a trial of Velcade <coughs> dexamethasone versus Velcade dexamethasone and panabinostat in terms of management of relapsed myeloma. Now, how do we use these drugs? We need to be thinking in the time of relapse of what patients have had previously, whether they have high risk disease, and what are the uh, comorbidities, what is their tolerability of the various regimens. So we really do need to think in an individual patient about their treatment history and their otherwise medical status when we're choosing the appropriate treatment. Nowadays, novel agents, lenalidomide and bortezomib, often both of them, are utilized as initial treatment. In such a patient, then the second line treatment for relapsed myeloma management would consist of either pomalidomide, dexamethasone, or carfilzomib. At this year's American Society of Clinical Oncology, they are uh, now uh, presenting data for even combining carfilzomib with pomalidomide uh, and showing very effective treatment. Agents such as panabinostat, which is the most recently approved agent, would probably be reserved for patients whose myeloma returns even after pomalidomide or carfilzomib. This is because uh, panabinostat is a broad-acting histone deacetylase inhibitor, and although it's active, it does have side effects uh, and probably would be reserved for not the relapsed myeloma management, but probably for relapsed refractory disease. Um, suffice it to say, um, with the very effective combinations of immunomodulatory drugs and proteasome inhibitors initially, lenalidomide and bortezomib as an example, and with the concept coming now that we can combine the same two classes of agents in relapsed management, carfilzomib and pomalidomide, the likelihood of prolonged progression-free survival initially and then very effective management of relapsed disease literally lasting years is very much a reality. So I guess the highlight here is we're not only making progress in terms of the initial management of myeloma, but when myeloma relapses, we now have very effective therapy that literally can prolong uh, survival uh, in a quality way for many years indeed. So carfilzomib is the um, second generation proteasome inhibitor. It's an epoxy ketone that covalently binds to the chymotriptic site of the proteasome. So the depth and the duration of proteasome inhibition is longer than bortezomib. Um, we were very involved in the initial registration of carfilzomib with our FDA, and it received accelerated approval uh, three years ago now because roughly a quarter of patients whose myeloma was relapsed and refractory to all other agents had a response, and these responses lasted about eight months, uh, and in fact, these patients lived longer. Now, what's evolved since then is the ASPIRE trial, which was lenalidomide dexamethasone carfilzomib versus lenalidomide dexamethasone in earlier patients, relapsed multiple myeloma, one to three prior therapies, 
And that was a very positive trial showing the benefit of carfilzomib, lenalidomide, dexamethasone in relapse disease. Now, when we're trying to understand whether carfilzomib or bortezomib might be more useful, we need to assess the patient and their status, but also the relative merit or activity. So the Endeavor trial compared uh, bortezomib dexamethasone versus carfilzomib dexamethasone. The dexamethasone dose was 40 milligrams given with the proteasome inhibitor in both cases. And the carfilzomib dose was escalated up to 56 milligrams per meter squared. And what this trial showed was basically that the progression-free survival was doubled uh, when you used carfilzomib versus bortezomib. And efficacy, therefore, was uh, superior. But that the tolerability was also uh, very favorable. In terms of neuropathy, if your patient has neuropathy, carfilzomib would be the obvious choice because neuropathy as a side effect uh, is really uh, negligible in the setting of carfilzomib treatment. There had been concern with carfilzomib for side effects, including pulmonary or cardiac toxicity. And in this large randomized trial, the Endeavor trial, there were more cardiac and pulmonary events in the carfilzomib-treated patients than in the bortezomib-treated patients, but it was really a minor difference. So it wasn't uh, a concern to the extent that uh, one would have uh, potentially anticipated. So I think the Endeavor trial is very useful. It shows, in fact, that you can use a proteasome inhibitor, carfilzomib, without attendant neuropathy and with really quite effective treatment. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, or as has been the trend in disease treatment earlier, um, nowadays, bortezomib is being used more and more as an initial treatment. So this Endeavor trial is showing that carfilzomib is active, uh, very active in the relapse setting, suggesting that, in fact, it really will confer um, major benefit for relapse disease. Um, we will see, and we already have seen to some extent, the use of carfilzomib earlier in the disease course. Dr. Jakubowiak from uh, the, um, Chicago and also um, investigators uh, now um, from the National Cancer Institute have shown that carfilzomib, lenalidomide, dexamethasone used as an initial treatment can achieve nearly universal responses and high extent of response, minimal residual disease rates approaching 80 percent or greater, so that we are excited about taking these novel agents that are active in the advanced setting and moving them uh, into the earlier disease setting as well, where in most cases the activity is even greater.